Okay, we want to continue our story about why we call it algebra, and as you'll recall, we call it algebra because it's a word in the title of the first algebra book written by this man, al uh, around the year 800. So, uh, al is born in Kiva, uh, but he writes the first algebra book actually in Baghdad. So, let's go to the Middle East and use Google Earth to travel again to the birthplace of al so we can see how where it is in, re, uh, in relation to Baghdad, Iraq. So you can see here's Kiva up here, here's Baghdad, and so he writes the first algebra book in Baghdad. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what's going on in Baghdad at this time in history around the year 750 that would be conducive to writing an algebra book? Because things don't look like that today when we see Baghdad on TV. It doesn't look like the kind of place that somebody would write an algebra book. Well, it turns out the answer to that question is something called the House of Wisdom. The House of Wisdom, powerhouse of intellectual exploration and discussion, at one time it held 400,000 books. The scholars in the House of Wisdom discovered algebra, were adept at astronomy and navigation, studied humanity, zoology, geography, as well as medicine, alchemy, and chemistry. They translated all the Greek scientific and philosophical texts, including those of Aristotle, Pythagoras, so on and so forth, into Arabic. So, this is what's going on in the House of Wisdom. They're bringing in all these ancient Greek books and also all the ancient Hindu books. They bring them into Baghdad and they translate them into Arabic. They study these things in Arabic and then uh, al Khwarizmi comes to Baghdad, looks at what's been translated, and he writes the first algebra. So here's a picture of the Middle East, uh, uh, the first hundred years after uh, Islam starts. And so Islam begins around the year 622, and the House of Wisdom starts in the year 750. And you can see that all of this region in the Middle East is under Muslim control all across North Africa and up into Spain. This is the Muslim Empire at this time, and the center of all the intellectual activity is in Baghdad right here. So I want to use Google Earth to go to the new library in Alexandria that houses some of the remnants of the ancient library in Alexandria. So there you can see Baghdad. Let's zoom in on Alexandria, Egypt and go right to the new library in Alexandria. Now I haven't been there. I've been to Egypt, but I haven't been to the new library there in Alexandria, but supposedly a very beautiful building and it houses some of the remnants of the ancient library. So they go in there, they pick up Euclid's elements of all the works of the ancient Greeks, they bring them into Baghdad, they translate them into Arabic. You have to understand Baghdad at this time in history is, has a very diverse population. There's a big Muslim population, but there's also Arab Christians there, there's a large Jewish population, and there's Persians and Arabs that have kept their old religion. All of these people are working together in the House of Wisdom on these translation projects. And you can imagine it's a very difficult process to take these books, translate them into Arabic, and then study them. And so what happens is, they'll make a translation, they'll start studying, especially in mathematics. They'll see what's going on with the mathematics and they'll start to extend it a little bit and they'll run into problems with it and they'll think to themselves, maybe that translation wasn't right. They'll go back to the original work, look at the translation and many times find out that the translation need to be corrected and then they can do the mathematics after that. So a very long, difficult, arduous process, but that's what they're doing with this big diverse population in the city of Baghdad. Here's a little timeline just so we can reference all the things that are going on. One thing I find interesting, here's the ancient Greeks. Here is the first woman mentioned in the history of mathematics, Hypatia of Alexandria. Now Hypatia, it turns out, is the last librarian in the ancient library. And Hypatia is a teacher in the library and she re rewrites parts of Euclid's Elements and some of the other books to make them more understandable to her students. But Hypatia, the first woman mentioned in the history of mathematics, also the last librarian in the ancient library. Uh, over here you can see al Khwarizmi. Here's the House of Wisdom in the year 750. So the next question is, why establish the House of Wisdom? Why do this? Why undertake these really difficult translation projects, especially with the mathematics and all the work from the ancient Greeks and that? Why do this? Well, the answer to that, there's many answers to that actually, but one of the answers comes from Islam itself. So let me show you a quote from the Prophet Muhammad. 
The Prophet Muhammad says, the ink of the scholar is more holy than the blood of the martyr. So in Islam, um, scholarship and that at this time in history is treasured. The, they, they want to increase their knowledge. They want to study the ancient books. You have to remember, this is less than right around 100 years after the Prophet Muhammad is on earth. So all the people in Baghdad, they've got this new thing going. They're trying to do the right thing that their leader has taught them. And one of the things is that they treasure scholarship. So that's one of the reasons that they undertake these very difficult translation projects. So um, here's what we've done. Uh, what's going on in Baghdad that would be conducive to writing an algebra book? The answer is the House of Wisdom. Very diverse culture, something I also find interesting that in that culture, there's a lot of the groups of people we see in conflict today. We've got the Christians, the Muslims, and the Jews all working together in the House of Wisdom on these translation projects. A little history so we can see where Hypatia, the first woman mentioned in history of mathematics, is involved in this in the ancient library and rewriting some of those books before they go into Baghdad to be translated into Arabic. And why do we do this? Um, why undertake these very difficult translation projects? Well, part of the answer to that actually comes from Islam itself. So that's part two in our uh, answering the question, why do we call it algebra?